Welcome back to week 11 and 12 of my Achilles recovery journey. Once again, I am Dr. Stacy Barber. I am the owner and founder of the PhysioFix, which is a physical therapy and sports performance facility in Phoenix, Arizona, but we also do like online services too. So I myself am a physical therapist, which is why I want to share with you guys my own recovery journey as I do more of an accelerated Achilles rehab protocol. So week 11 and 12 was pretty exciting. There was a lot of frustration at the beginning of week 11. And then I feel like week 12, we really like pivoted around a turn and a lot of good stuff happened. So let me just kind of share those highlights first. And then as always, you guys can like read below and I timestamped everything within this vlog and you guys can just like click on it and then go right to that part if that's the part that interests you the most. So week 11 and week 12, the highlights. So once week 12 hit, I really started pushing ankle dorsiflexion, which is really good because then later on that week, I could do more like heavier back squats and front squats and I could snatch for the first time since this injury happened. I'm an Olympic weightlifter, so this is a really big deal for me. Um, also at 12 weeks, like 12 weeks and three days post-op, no, 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 it was 11 weeks, 11 weeks and like five days post-op, I got my single leg calf raise with handheld assist. Check out the video. Like I was super excited about this because I had this, this arbitrary goal of my own to get the single leg calf raise by, you know, 12 weeks or like three months. And I beat that goal. It's not completely without a little bit of like assistance because there's handheld assist, but I would say it's probably with like 10%. So I'm doing like a 90% body weight single leg calf raise, which is huge for me. Um, another big thing is I went on a hike for the first time. So I love to go hiking. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, so there's a lot of hills and I just love to get outdoors and hike with my dogs. I did not do this hike with my dog. Do not recommend hiking with a dog the first hike back, but I did hike um, a little bit of uneven terrain. There was a little bit of this going on, but it was mostly flat, but it was a mile and a half and I did it um, I can't remember the exact time, but I did it nice and slow and I felt pretty good. I would say the hardest thing was going up the hills because I had to really push off of that calf and use my Achilles um, and going down wasn't so bad. So I know some people think going down is harder. It's harder on the knees, but going up is definitely harder on the ankles and the calves, at least for me. Um, also week 12 or maybe it was week 11. Yeah, it's week 11. I got my first pedicure post Achilles rupture. So I've been kind of pushing that off because my scar, I don't know if you guys remember, but my scar wasn't healing like perfect and it still doesn't look fantastic. I have like a keloid scar kind of coming about and I'm not really sure like why other than that my scar is pretty long and I'm on my feet a long time throughout the day. So I get a lot of swelling in my feet throughout the day, which means that my scar swells throughout the day. And that means that my recovery in terms of my incision took longer to heal. So this was the first time that I got the pedicure because I had a closed scar without it opening up for like three or four weeks by that point. So that was really exciting. And I took up my dog for a walk for the first time. It was a very short walk. She is a puppy and she's crazy. So it was like 15 minutes just in my neighborhood on the sidewalk, but it was a start. So I'm really scared because I don't want her to pull me and then me to have to like run because I'm not even running yet. Um, but at least that's like a step in the right direction, literally. Okay, so let's go back to week 11. Week 11, um, we started implementing something called an air cup. I got this sent to me to like try out and review and I have it right here. So this is from Recover Fun and it's called the air cup. And what it is, it's this little device like this. And it has like these, they come in different sizes and you put them on, I'll kind of show you. So you put them on, you screw them in and this is not advertisement for them at all. They literally just send it to me. And I don't know if it'll actually do it. It creates the suction. So you see that? So it like has red light. I don't know if you guys can see the red light going on there, but there is red light going on. So this is infrared um, technology, which is supposed to help with inflammation. And it also has different like settings for kind of pressure of cupping. So there's different modes, different settings and different intensities. Um, I'm gonna turn that off because I don't want to have a hickey right there. But we were able with the smallest one to kind of get it on my calf and to get it on my heel and to get it a little bit along the scar for, you know, it has to be a certain size of flatness for it to get on, but we were able to kind of get it on there. And then my scar really starting, it started to loosen up. It's not, it's not loose. 
It's still very thick, very dense, but I feel like it's a step in the right direction. So we started implementing that at week 11 and we've continued to do that through week 12 so far. So definitely recommend. Um, you definitely don't need something fancy like this, even though this is pretty portable and cute. Um, just a normal cuffing set would also work. So I'll link that below too. I'll link both of these below if you find that it's useful. Um, infrared technology is kind of, there's still a lot to be learned and a lot to be researched, but you know, if it has the, these anti-inflammatory properties or it can help with healing, you know, it's not gonna hurt anything. So you might as well try. So I tried it and it seems to be working so far. Um, some other things that we've been doing. So we've been doing a lot of single leg calf and uh, gastroc and soleus strengthening, of course. Um, doing it on a Kaiser, so with a cable. We're also doing it with, you know, standing up right now that I can do more single leg calf raises. And we're doing it different ranges of motion of dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So I'm strengthening throughout the entire range of motion. And those are, I mean, it's still challenging. Like, even though I can do single leg calf raises, crazy calf raises is I can't do a lot of them, right? And I can't do a sustained contraction. So I find that I fatigue out quickly and I can't do them every day. So if I do one day and I have a good day, the next day is definitely not gonna be good. And the next day may not even be good, but maybe the next day will be good. So healing for like tendons takes a while. And we know that after you like load it, you need 48 to 72 hours before you load it again. And I'm finding that's really true. So I'm definitely keeping that in mind as I progress through my rehab. We started jumping on something called an air track this week. So I want to get back to, you know, doing more like dynamic things. I was a gymnast in my past and I want to get back to doing backflips and everything that comes with being a gymnast, you know, I just want to be able to still do it long term. So jumping on the air track was kind of fun. It was like a little spark of light, you know, of kind of who I used to be. And it just felt like I could probably get back to that. It was so it was a good glimmer of hope for the first time. Um, because this recovery is really brutal and I was very like depressed and sad for a while, but now I feel like I'm like accomplishing some things and I can see that there's light at the end of the tunnel. So we did jumping on the air track. We also did some like bounding forward back side to side, some multi-directional jumping, um, some kind of like skater jumps with like a pause, um, squat jumps, started doing box jumps. So I got, have gotten up to 12 inches. Whoop, whoop. Um, it might not seem like a lot, but it's a step in the right direction. And I was able to jump up, turn around and jump down and absorb the force without cheating and compensating. So the, the down is going well, the up, I still feel like those first few jumps, I have this like hesitation and I feel like there's some fear and apprehension there. So I'm really trying to like tell myself that it's okay. The tissue is healed. It's going to be fine. Like the tissue is very strong at this point. It's very dense and I'm not gonna re-rupture. So I'm not gonna rupture. I've gotten it stronger. I'm ready for this. So I have to constantly kind of convince myself that I can still do these things and push those things, but it's going well so far. So the 12 inch box was good and hopefully we'll just keep pushing it from here, but I'm really just trying to focus on form and technique and not trying to like jump up too fast or push too fast. Another thing that we've been working on in physical therapy at least is like the calcaneus. So my heel, you know, my anchors kind of go into the heel and they put extra anchors in my heel so I could kind of start loading early, start progressing really fast. And that comes with some downsides, right? So now I have extra anchors in my heel. So that means that my heel does not want to move. So we've been really working on calcaneal eversion, inversion, just trying to get that thing moving. We've been doing some manual therapy, you know, techniques on it. Um, it's still not moving very much, but once I can get it moving, I feel like I can do a lot of exercises a lot easier. So I can do even calf raises easier. And you don't even realize how much your calcaneus and that movement plays a role in just a plantar flexion position. But trust me, without it, you feel it. So I feel like it got stuck. And so we've been mobilizing it, not just an eversion and inversion, but doing like PA glides and just trying to get things moving. It's been really helpful for that. On my own, I've been able to, you know, increase the strength of my legs and I've been able to back squat more weight this week or these last two weeks. I've been able to front squat more weight. I've been able to deadlift more weight. So I'm up to front squatting. Um, I think I'm front squatting 123. Yeah, week 11 and 12, 123 pounds for like two reps, four reps felt fine, no shifting. I was able to back squat up to like 143 pounds, no shifting, felt fine. I was able to start deadlifting up to 213 pounds, no shifting, felt fine. 
all of those things were moving in the right direction and jumping was moving in the right direction in therapy. So I started to try to implement some snatching and I first started with just the training bar. You can see all the videos here, but the training bar stuff went really well. So I just, as long as my technique was good and sound, I kept increasing the weight to see like how it felt. And I can tell you that if I just do like a snatch pull, if you know what that is, it's just like basically like a snatch grip deadlift, but then you have to do a calf raise at the top. Now that movement I can't quite do yet because I don't have that full range of motion of that calf raise. Um, but you don't really need that full calf raise range of motion when you're doing a real snatch because it's more of a jump. So I can do the snatch better than I can do a snatch pull. And this also comes with the clean pulls too. So I know if those things are just going to improve with time, but I didn't shift at all. And I have enough ankle dorsiflexion with my weightlifting shoes on to be able to do a full snatch without any compensations, which is just makes me so happy. Like it's like the best thing right now that I can actually do something that I want to get back to and be competitive at. And I'm only 12 weeks out. So dorsiflexion, I know I mentioned several times that I did not want to push dorsiflexion until I hit the 12 week mark. So I hit the 12 week mark and I started pushing ankle dorsiflexion. So the reason why I held off on pushing it from week six to week now, to week now, to week 12, is because I felt like at week six or week five, when I first started working on ankle dorsiflexion, it was really stiff at first. But once I you know, got to neutral, I really started making like tremendous improvements really, really fast, like scary fast. Like I felt like there was no stopping point and I don't want to have an elongated tendon, right? Some shorter tendons, stiffer tendons can produce more force. Um, so I don't want a really stiff tendon either, but I want something in the middle. So I want to like reduce my risk of getting another rupture. So I want to have enough, you know, link to not rupture again. And I also want to have enough stiffness to be able to be explosive, plyometric and strong in different movements. So I wanted to stop until we hit the 12 week mark. Cause then you reduce your risk of sustaining another re-rupture after you hit 12. So that's just tissue healing timelines for you. So once I hit week 12, we started working like ankle, ankle rocks, um, heel sl um, wall slides. So with my foot against the wall, you'll see the videos here, just kind of like sliding down, finding that in range and then coming up and then starting to load that position. And then snatches and squats and stuff like that also work on ankle dorsiflexion. So I felt comfortable really like getting down and using load to load my ankle and load that ankle dorsiflexion too. So that's going pretty well. I'm going to not push that too fast too soon. So what I'm going to do is I guess something that I just recently learned is called the leapfrog method. So I'm going to increase range of motion and then work on strength and then increase a little bit more range of motion and then working on strengthening. So I don't want to just increase range of motion really rapidly fast because then you have this elongated tendon that has no strength. So if you do this little leapfrog method, then you are making sure that you're matching the strength with now that new range of motion. So that's what I'm um, focusing on right now in terms of rehab, as well as on my own, doing a lot of that ankle dorsiflexion stuff and a lot of big toe extension stretching too, which plays a big role in the ankle mobility. I'm still continuing to build confidence with all my normal movements. I feel like I'm still limping. So a lot of the big things are going really well at this point. And I just want to say that some of the little things aren't going super well. And I think that that's important to keep in mind too, because I can squat, I can snatch, I can do box jumps but I can't do little like, um, like line hop jumps without compensating and cheating. I can't do like a full calf raise without still wanting to like shift away if I'm doing a bilateral one. Um, I'm still having trouble going downstairs in the morning because my calf and my ankle is still so stiff in the morning. I also have noticed that when I go upstairs, I can't just put like just my toe and the ball of my foot on the stairs. I don't have enough strength to do that. So I have to put my whole foot on the stair to be able to go up, which is not ideal because you should be able to stay on your toes and have enough isometric strength built up to be able to do different movements and stay on the balls of your feet. So knowing that that is still lacking, we've started to implement more stuff like that in rehab recently, as well as I'm doing it at home. So I'm doing like, before I go to bed, I'm doing a lot of four way ankle stuff with a band, but I'm also doing like isometric soleus bridges. And I'm also doing isometric um, things against a wall and even standing up. And I'll do the same thing in the morning when I'm getting ready. So I'll do like a sustained plantar flexion sort of movement and hold it there as long as I can. And I shake and it gets really, really tired. And I feel really kind of I just feel weak um, for lack of a better word. And 
it's just frustrating because it's those little tiny things that really matter. I cannot run. I know there's some people running at 12 weeks. I can't run yet, um, maybe based on the location of my injury, maybe based on just I pushed dorsiflexion at first and then backed off. Maybe it's just because I haven't pushed dorsiflexion enough now. Whatever the reason is, is no one heals on the same timeline and no one's um, progress is linear. So I'm not gonna constantly do this, right? There's gonna be some things that I'm not gonna be good at for a while and I'm okay with that because I know that this whole process, it just takes so long and I know that I just have to like step back and know that it's a nine month recovery and I'm only three months in and I have to keep that in the back of my mind knowing that there's still a lot to achieve. Okay, that's it for week 11 and week 12. Um, obviously there's still a lot of things that I'm working on, especially that isometric strength, um, calf strength, of course, Achilles strength, overcoming fears and those sort of things that you don't even realize that kind of set in, you know, along this journey, this recovery journey. Um, but yeah, it's been good so far. I'm starting to really make some progress and pick up some speed. So I'm excited for the next few weeks. Hopefully start, things start moving a lot faster and I will definitely get update you guys along the way. I'm doing every two weeks now because it's just easier that way. But let me know if you guys have any questions below. Um, subscribe to my channel and have a great day. Bye.